Attack on Titan is one of my favorite series of all time. Naruto, Death Note, and Parasite, same way. Hunter x Hunter and Berserk are still ongoing, but I've never had the sense of closure, fulfillment, happiness, and refreshing optimism from a series ending like I felt for Jujutsu Kaisen. They took such a serious world, with all the tragic events throughout the show, and had characters persevere through them to live the happy lives they wanted, without taking away from the impact of what happened. The world's been irreversibly changed. Major characters have irrecoverably died in every major incident where that was a point of tension, and the surviving cast has physical scars and impairments. But the amount of personal growth the main cast went through was phenomenal, and allowed them to crawl through their circumstances and patch the wider world together because of the real and serious ways they matured throughout the story. Jujutsu Kaisen made a beautifully intricate world, with a really engaging power system, but made it clear as the plot went on that the story was about Yuji Itadori becoming able to see the core flaw of this world, then realize the ideals that surpass it, and attain the strength to back up those ideals. Like most stories, Jujutsu Kaisen had a primary message, which was a critique of people with power undervaluing the innovations from people who lack power. And like most fantasy series, it came up with mechanics and a civilization that complemented its argument. The circumstances of each person's birth on the planet give them various resources and opportunity to develop strengths, like how people have innate domains and inherent techniques. And only some people end up getting to be in circles or job fields that have a dominant impact on wider society, like how people are born as sorcerers or need limited outside intervention to become one. Look, at the end of the day, our overall opportunities are built on and tied to that connected relationship with the wider world. Like how everything in sorcery boils down to binding vows and the ways of jujutsu. But the fundamental concept of sorcery is kept secret. The people who are strong are never in a position to realize the value of others blah 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 blah. Look, everyone is dealing with life or death stakes around things too shrouded in mystery and conflict to really get the bigger picture. So we get a guy from our real world to learn the principles of the show by being put as a newbie through this fantasy world and gradually learning about it until he makes the revelation and gets enough strength through connectivity to outperform the ultimate isolationist, which is the point of the whole show. After this, we get a neat little epilogue story, like the Rolling Stones arc in Golden Wind. We get to see a montage of plenty of the surviving characters in their new status quos concluding their arcs within the actual story and making their lives clearly happier, while also showing that the world itself is continuing all around them and more stuff can happen in that imaginary setting. I've never felt a show end so well. One of the biggest problems that often happens is like what 20th century boys and monster do, where it feels like the complexity, realism, and believability of its setting gets warped as the end of the show tries to tie everything back to its message. 20th century boys and monster both aggressively make some kind of argument. In the case of 20th century boys, it's that heroes aren't real, and for monsters, it's that monsters aren't real. So, both of their stories gradually expand their respective roles over tons of arcs. But their stories have to be one-dimensionally driven by their messages to proceed or wrap up any of their accomplishments. And that takes away from how dramatically the audience has to engage with them. <coughs> For instance, in Monster, we keep learning that the supposed bad guys are really just more nuanced organizations of people led by certain overall tragedies and key figures from other organizations, only for the same explanations to repeat themselves arc after arc after arc, where every supposed inhuman monster finds some way to be pacified by their fundamental humanity, but the story thinks that the same message still has to be beaten into you, so the storytelling never moves past it. And then, at the very end, all wraps up by running out of locations and people to pivot to. So the characters just go back to their lives, and conclude that all the life or death stakes are ultimately drama, that aren't worth continuing. Look, the plot makes sense and the themes are fine, but the story didn't have any more of its message to tell, which meant that as it kept progressing, the simplistic resolutions became increasingly obvious. And the fact it didn't have the heart to at least care about the plot itself to provide a conclusive ending for its characters made the ending feel pointless. 
20th century boys took every opportunity to tell you that heroes don't exist. If a character has special circumstances or talents, they don't go anywhere and become a massive loser. If a character goes through a bunch of growth and works their way up to becoming more heroic, they squander that potential, mess it up, and become much worse than how they started. If a character seems admirable from the start, they were some kind of fraud, and then they are shown to be more pathetic than they are cool for every cool trait they are shown with. Climactic showdowns with the villain end with the villain winning, and a time skip into an even worse conflict. And the main characters only triumph when the state of the world gets so bad that doing the very bare minimum is enough to cause a wave of response from the rest of the population, and get them to do most of the final accomplishments together. It's a neat premise, conceptually, but the storytelling didn't need to spend 200 chapters with intricate character and growth attachments alongside technological and supernatural mysteries, and a heavy appeal of realistic strategy. To dedicate the last 50 chapters to watching a mob blindly charge forward and topple everything in their path while the mystery and strategy elements of the show are dismissed in a twist punishes the audience for caring. Now, Jujutsu Kaisen, on the other hand, punishes the audience before its point is made or for neglecting its message, but gives a satisfying conclusion for what the story's been about from the very start. Not only that, but it also makes up for any tough love it had to do in the middle, without tarnishing the impact. Nobura and Higuruma were always implied to be savable but close to death, and Nanami was confirmed to be happy in the afterlife, since Gojo learned that information from his spirit that he wouldn't have been able to know otherwise. Jujutsu Kaisen stands out not just for the depth of the world building or its intricate power system, but for how it masterfully carries its message to the very end without undermining its narrative complexity. Its conclusion balances the heavy toll of loss, tragedy, and character development with a sense of hope and fulfillment. Unlike other stories that tend to either force a one-dimensional message or lose themselves in convoluted resolutions, Jujutsu Kaisen brings everything full circle. The narrative honors both the weight of its themes and the growth of its cast, showing that perseverance, learning from the past, and understanding the flaws of the world are what truly allow its characters to move forward. The ending achieves something rare in modern storytelling, a resolution that feels earned without negating the hardships experienced. Jujutsu Kaisen respects its audience by tying its message to the evolution of its characters, ensuring the story's heart remains intact while providing closure. It's not just about the defeat of an antagonist or the triumph of heroes. It's about understanding the world as it is, overcoming its challenges, and seeing the bigger picture. This level of maturity in storytelling, where both optimism and loss coexist without diminishing each other, is what sets it apart and makes its conclusion resonate after the final chapter is read. The world, though changed, continues on, just like the characters and audience are felt to contemplate its future full of possibility but anyways guys that's the end of the video grad class has been kicking my ass recently so expect videos around this length as per usual i'll leave some clips with some audio enjoy how many lives have been lost okay in my defense most of them died of old age okay most of them died of old age the only person i accidentally killed by accidentally plunging a knife in their chest that happened to be there when i slept and fell was frit okay that's the only one. That's the only person that quote unquote died. Okay, guys? Jeez. Get your facts straight. How are you doing, Ryuji? Doing good? I trust you, okay? I know we've had our differences in the past, you know. Alright, let's not get too hasty. I don't see him. I saw him walk right there, walking towards him slowly. Ah! Oh my God. Why did I do that? <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. I don't want to follow him. Ah! Why did you make me do that? Why the fuck did you make me do that? 
<laughs> Fucking Why damn it! I think running toward him is a good idea. You told me to! I say a lot of I'm gonna need to. And they're all to mess with you. <laughs>